Hi, Pep. Um, what is your feeling in the Champions League now? You, you said that when you won it last year that it was like the end of a chapter for Manchester City. What do you feel about building a new chapter? Because you've still got a chance of winning all the trophies that you won last year. It was better to be here already winning the Champions League, but uh, as I said, it's over. Uh, it's finished maybe a part, but uh, once we are here, we have to try to to win games, win games, and tomorrow we have the chance to to win quarterfinals again, and this is the target. Far, more far of that, I don't think too much. Uh, Pep, you've got a, a hugely important week. They all are two different competitions, two different tests. How do you balance your team selection across these two important games? Selection will depend how the people recover the last game, how they feel, uh, and that's all. And after we'll take a selection tomorrow morning. And uh, and the competition is so really really important to be focused because. Uh, in football, everything can happen. You have to be aware of that and and do a good performance and qualify. This is the target. So I have a lot of respect for Copenhagen, for the way they defend. They can shape for different systems. You have to read it quickly. Because as I said, so Champions League is Champions League. And to be again, to try to be in the best eight teams in Europe, this is our target. Yeah. Hi, Pepper. It's been a week now since Jack's injury. Are you any clearer now how long he's, he's going to be out? No. no. Tomorrow's not ready, and I don't know how long we'll be. Okay. Hi, Pep. Um, after the game in Copenhagen, you were talking about the crowd, and in those kind of environments, you need to make a thousand passes. And maybe don't even worry too much about scoring a goal, just make the thousand passes. When it comes to telling the players that kind of game plan, what do they actually need to know? Because it's not just about passes for the sake of it, is it? It's, like you said after the game, it's the right tempo. So what do you have to tell the players when you're going into a, a game like that and you want to do that? Like we play or we're going like, to play? No, like in Copenhagen away or any stadium like the like Madrid, Liverpool, for example. No, it depends. It depends on the quality of the players. If you put the player, for example, for example, like Jack, for example, like it's more, you have the speed to go, but more control than Jeremy, for example. Just put in the play, you know the the rhythm will be a little bit slower, lower than uh, than we play with them for Jeremy when he's in his mood to, to go one against one. This is a stupid example, I would say, but this is the the quality of the players make dictate the rhythm that you have to play. How important is it for people like maybe Ruben Ruben Diaz or Rodri to be really comfortable under intense pressure from the crowd, but also? The opposition to still hold on to the ball to use it in those areas is that is that a big we part can of it? we can do uh, transition actions quick actions but we are not built to do this all the time so that's why we're more comfortable when we have a lot a lot of passes and flying or moving all together we, we I think we feel more comfortable as a team but with the speed with Kevin Mateus Mateo Erling of course feel we have a pace to to sometimes do a transitions, and we cannot <coughs> avoid it. When we can do it, we have to. Thank you. Hi, Pep. Uh, Alvaro Cruz, Caliente TV, Mexico. Um, last Sunday, uh, we see Manchester City with big self-confidence, uh, winning the duels, uh, scoring uh, the second balls. Do you think at, uh, at this time Manchester City has the level, the peak level, like, like, like last year, to fight against for the treble? The only target is to try to qualify tomorrow for the quarterfinals. We are far, far away at talking about this thing. We didn't say it last season until we won the final against uh, United and the FA Cup. So we are at the beginning of the March. So tomorrow only target is Copenhagen. I'm focused since yesterday afternoon, this morning and tomorrow. Do, do you have uh, Alex Alcala, a Mexican player, training with the first team? What do you think about him? No, we just training sometimes, so it's not trained regularly. So sometimes come with us when we need it. And all the academy players help us to do the training, what you have to do. And for them, it's important to play with the senior players and try to improve what, uh, yeah, their abilities. Did uh, any Copenhagen players impress you extra uh, or 
a lot in the, the way the they defend the, the compact. The, all the movements they do, they are really, really well organized. Mm -hmm. So are there any players <coughs> you have had an extra eye on in your preparation for tomorrow? Always I'm aware about all the players for the opponents, but especially with our players, what they have to do. So we struggled last season there to, to win, and we play a really good game, considering I know what happened against United, against Galatasaray, how difficult it was for Bayern Munich to beat them in Copenhagen. They were not able, Bayern Munich, to beat Copenhagen in Munich. So I know perfectly the strength, the quality, because we played two years in a row with the same manager. So, of course, they have a strong link of strikers. So you can link with them. They have a pace in the transition. They link inside a lot of time. But especially what I like a lot is the way they defend, they compact, and really, really good movements they do. <laughs> hey, Pat. You were um, you're talking about the transitions before. How much, when, when you were looking to sign Haaland, how much of a consideration was that when you were profiling him in that he can give you something different over the top that maybe you didn't have? Beforehand. Yeah, but at the end of the transition is the skills that you have. When you have Bernardo Silva now or David Silva in the past, or you know, you have to play in that same way. When you have Leroy, you have Raheem, you have Kevin, and we have you use most transitions. The reason why for the skills they have, and you, we want that. I like when we're in the ball. In how was the third goal against United? It was a transition. We may high pressing, regain the ball. Rodri, one pass Erling, ciao. So I love that. I like it. That's why we make a high pressing. But make a transition for 40 meters or 45 meters, we have few players for that skills, but we are not much. So we, we are not good in that. And always I have the feeling that we make a transition so quick and you score a goal, well done. But if you don't score a goal, it's a transition against you. As quick the ball goes, as quick the goals come back. And with more opponents coming back to you. And that balance sometimes is difficult to discriminate. I know the fans sometimes want in three passes to score a goal. Me too. But we play against teams that they are smart enough to know how they control that. So that's why the balance we can do it or don't do it. Jeremy, for example, Jeremy is an incredible player for five meters, but running 40 meters is not Leroy. Leroy can do it 10, 50 times because mom and dad gave him that genetic to do it. Jeremy, no. So discriminate how, like it's football. Why you play one touch? Four touches, when you shoot, when you cross, when you make a fold, the decisions have to make instantly. And who are the best players that take more often the right decisions? It depends what happened, the right ones. And, and, <coughs> and sometimes when you play good, it's because we took <coughs> not the proper decisions, but they are human beings. It's happened. So it's not a big, big problem. But from eight years, I think we are used to play more comfortable with the ball all together. I think it's, we are more comfortable. But at the same time, when Kevin has the ball and have Erling to run 40 meters, but he has the pace to run 40 meters, give him the ball and go one against one against keeper or central defender. Of course, we have to use it. And we knew it when we bought or, or Erling came here. We knew that we can use it, and we have to. Hello, uh, Daniel Reyes from TNT uh, Sports Mexico. Uh, you mentioned uh, Alex Alcala. Um, we want to know uh, your impression of him as a football player, and did you have the chance to, to talk with him and give him uh, some no. advice? No, not yet. Maybe in the future. Of course, we say, hi, how are you there? But he trained not much times, two or three times. So he's with us. We're happy to have him. He's an academy player, but step by step. <coughs> Um, you've been involved in this competition as a manager for nearly 15 years now. What is your view of the level of the competition now? Is it, is it harder to win than ever? Getting or is the better. level not as high perhaps as it was a couple of years ago? Getting better and tougher. I always had the feeling when I arrived in Barcelona in the first years and OK, we arrived semi-finals. Now to reach semi-finals is so difficult. The teams are better, managers are better. Everything is... It's even more difficult when I was a football player in the beginning from... But at the end, the better teams always go through. When you play good two games, you have more chance to... to you know, to Does that mean for. it's probably a, a bigger achievement to win it now than when you were winning it in charge of Barcelona? No, I wouldn't say that. Otherwise, I undermine what we achieve in Barcelona. I would not like that. So it was so really good. No, no, I'm not saying that. 
so that price is better than the previous ones it's not every moment is every moment what I think is when I was in Barcelona and by Munich here every title you win or you're out there always is difficult it's not for granted it's not because it's easy every step you do is so complicated for demanding for the opponents for many reasons you have to be good in the right moment mentally physically and, and the skills and the game plan and many many things lucky in the right moments so win titles is so difficult and that's why I give the same credit for the first I won in a we won with the second team Barcelona until us won so there are a lot of work behind a lot Obviously, Erling's a very kind of talented player, but there's no kind of guarantee that he would settle into the squad, you know, like socially with the the rest of the players. How good is it for you that he's established those kind of friendships with? Because he seems quite close to like Phil and and Jack. Erling, yeah, it was so quick. It was what impressed the most since the first preseason in the, the tour. We had done it. It was it was quick. And that's happened because the. I would think the guys embrace really, really quick and really well the new ones, but the new ones has to do the the step, depending how they are. It was smiling, it was so easy. I said for, it's what it impressed the most of the pitch, his character, lovely character to, to settle. I think I'm starting to think he's kind of a, he's a superstar, isn't he? but he's, he's also quite yeah. kind of easy to get on with. Absolutely. But I, I met some of them. I mean, the biggest, biggest star, more humble they are. I don't know why, but it happened when I was a football player in Barcelona, and normally the biggest ones are more <laughs> understand better. That's why maybe they are bigger stars, for that reason. <clears throat> Hi, Pep. I'm Jonas from Danish Media. Um, do you have any concerns uh, going into the match, being 3-1 up against a, a team of Copenhagen's uh, size tomorrow? A concern always is there. Always. The warning is always there. Otherwise, we would not be signal. But in the same time, I prefer to start 1-3 than 3-1 down. So that's for sure. I prefer that result than the other one. I would love 0-7, but normally it doesn't happen in Champions League, especially away. In the same time, the warning are there. Yeah. I respect a lot Copenhagen, a lot. What are you worried about for tomorrow? Perform the way we have to do. Of course, the business is qualified for the next round. In football, everything happened. You have had a red car, a bad decision after 10 minutes. I put example this season. We won, I think, 1 2 or 1 3 in Leipzig, in group stage. After 20 minutes, it was 0 2. Two mistakes, first, especially the first one, 0 2. And when we concede another goal, we are second in the table. <coughs> the draw should have been Real Madrid, not Copenhagen. So, football, the details make the difference, and everything can happen. Even we concede a goal in 85 minutes, 0 1. Mm -mm. In 0 2, you have to go extra them. Because it's not goal difference now, goal, you know, goal in a, a way. So just prepare well, mentally, especially, read what they have to do, what they have done, what, guess what they can do. And the best way <laughs> to respect the competition in Copenhagen is do your best and, and perform. This competition deserves. To perform your best, otherwise, otherwise everything can happen. Last question, please, guys. Yeah, hi, Pep. Christian from Danish Media. Uh, you're talking about everything can can happen, and that you you have to respect Copenhagen. How do you prepare for the games against Copenhagen? Which parts do you do you need to to look out for 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 playing against this team? <coughs> prepare is what we have to do to beat them. What they do in attack. What do we have to to prevent them? What do we have to do? Defensively, it depends what they do, because there are patterns that Copenhagen does, so like we have, like we do, and this is the way we're going to prepare. Hi, Erling. Um, you came here last season, you scored all those goals, obliterated all the records, won every trophy virtually that there was to win. How do you stay motivated to do, to do it again or try and do it again? Yeah, you can think about it in two ways. Uh, one thing, I came here and won it all. And the other thing, I'm 23 years old and I won everything. And I got the taste of it, how it is to win, uh, win everything. And how I work is that when I feel this, I want to win it again. Easy as that.
Hi, Erling. Uh, as you said, it couldn't have really gone any better in your, your first year here, and yet you missed out to Messi on the two in big individual prizes. For you to actually win those, does he have to retire? <laughs> I don't know. Good question. Uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, true, he won it, and uh, he won the World Cup, so uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, he is the best that's ever played, I think, so, yeah, I don't know. Ben? Erling, obviously, you've just been talking there about coming here to win trophies. The Champions League continues, but then on Sunday you've got a huge game away at Anfield against Liverpool. It's the sort of game that already looks like it might determine who wins the Premier League. What's your mindset going into a challenge like that, facing your closest rivals away from home? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I haven't thought of that game anything until you ask me now. Uh, I focus on Copenhagen right now. Uh, but yeah, it's a massive game. Uh, it's going to be a huge game and uh, it's one of the biggest games in England. So um, we have to be ready for the game. We have to, we have to be brave and uh, we have to play at our best because um, they've been really good this season. Hi, Erling. Uh, you have scored 28 times this season, five against Luton. You scored against United, but sometimes people talk about the miss, talk more about the missed chances and the one against United especially. Do you think you have an impossible task now that people expect you to score so many that when you miss, oh, that's, that's unusual? Yeah, I think you can think it in maybe two ways. Last year's top score, I got 36 goals and... Uh, this season's top scorer has got, I think, 18 so far, so you can think it in two ways if it's been a good season or not for me. Uh, I think we're doing pretty good, you know, uh, as a team. That's my main focus, of course. Uh, but yeah, I've been missing. Uh, I miss a lot of chances. Uh, I will still keep on missing chances. I will still score goals. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, I'll probably miss a big chance uh, in the future as well. And uh, people are going to criticise me. And uh, what can I do then? Should I think of that? No, I should uh, focus on scoring more goals and to, to help the team. Oh. Erling, you coming up to two years here now at the club, obviously being very successful on the pitch. I was just wondering, how, how have you found life in Manchester and at the club since, since you moved here? Yeah, I enjoy life. I enjoy life with my my closest ones, and uh, and yeah, I uh, I enjoy it. I don't know what more to say. Hi, Erling. You seem to be very strong mentally, the way in which you're speaking about yourself and missing chances, and you have been since you basically started as a professional. You've always been like this, or is it something you've sort of had to work on, just to sort of focus? Who cares if I miss? I'll carry on, sort. Of. No, it's been a challenge for me when I was young. Uh, I remember when I was young, I could start crying if I if we lost and I missed a lot of chances or whatever. Uh, so it's been I've been working on it uh, a lot and uh, it's been a challenge. Uh, I think because I demand a lot from myself and I know my teammates also demand a lot from me and the manager and and all the fans. So uh, I think it's uh, something to work on. Uh, and in the end, it's everything's in here. So. Uh, it's an easy answer, but it's also so difficult. So, uh, but so far so good. Hi, Erling. I don't know if you saw, but Thierry Henry was on Sky last night, and he was talking about your link-up play, um, hold-up play, and the stuff you're good at, but also the stuff you could maybe do a bit more. And in terms of getting involved, but he also said he's not in the dressing room, so he doesn't know what Pep asks you to do. So, is it Pep saying don't get involved too much? Would you like to get involved more? Is it something that you could maybe improve? What is the actual instruction when it comes to getting on the ball in this team outside of the box? Yeah, I don't want to say too much about this because obviously it's uh, it's our tactic and what we use against the opponents. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, I do what he, he says me to do. Uh, I try to get involved when I should. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of things I can become better at. Uh, everything, by the way. Uh, people say I'm good at scoring goals, but I missed the biggest chance uh, in the world ever uh, two days ago. So I can also become better at that. Uh, but yeah, I can uh, become a lot better at a lot of things, and um, that's why we train. 
Hi, Arling. Um, with everything you've achieved in your career so far, uh, particularly here last season and this season, there's obviously inevitable speculation about your long-term future. Real Madrid have been touted as a possible club for you. But do you feel you've got everything here at this club to stay here long-term, everything you need as a player? I'm really happy, uh, especially with uh, the people that I'm surrounded with, uh, the manager, uh, the directors, the board. They are a group of amazing people. Uh, and I'm really happy, uh, I have to say. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, if I say this now, it's probably going to be a massive headline. Tomorrow you never know what the future brings. Uh, so, uh, but again, I'm happy. And uh, you can write this, but you can also have to write everything I said right before. Uh, I'm happy and, uh, and yeah, that's what I want to do. Sam? Um, Following on from that, the club would kind of love you to sign a new contract. Is that something that's been sort of in your head yet or are you just focusing on the pitch? Yeah, my focus may, mainly now is, is on the pitch. Uh, there's a lot of games. Uh, two days ago it was the Manchester derby uh, and now it's Champions League and on Sunday it's Liverpool. <laughs> so I think I should focus on that. I don't think I should focus on anything else at the moment. Hi, Erling. You were um, you were talking before about sort of blocking out the misses and learning how to deal with that. What does that look like when you work on things like that? Is that a mental thing that you do at home? Are there any sort of special exercises? Yeah, it's a mental thing. Uh, I don't have any exercises, but uh, <clears throat> uh, I think it's something I I've, I've been working naturally on. Uh, I think it's with everything in life. Uh, if you overthink something. Uh, it's not good. If you stress in your life, it's not good. Uh, so uh, it's with everything in life, uh, and with my life, it's mainly about football. So um, that's my focus. And I've got one career, and I try to do my best to have the best career as possible. Um, so yeah, my focus is to become the best possible version of myself. And the main main thing then is the mental the mental part. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know what more to say. Hi, uh, you're back scoring goals now, but it's not so long ago that you had a period of two months uh, with injury, with a couple of setbacks as well during that time. How did that uh, period affect you as a person? Uh, as a person? No, it was hard because you get used to something and then suddenly you, you don't know what to do. You have to focus on, focus on the main thing to be be training and and all that kind of things uh, when you can't play game games, but it's about trying to trying to find positive things in life because life is, is beautiful and uh, I've got a lot of beautiful people around me to 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 be around me and to to help me and to make me have a good time. So that's my my focus. So Danish media, please, guys. So just uh... Christopher from Danish media. Um, before the season, Premier League got a new Scandinavian striker in Rasmus Højlund. What is your thoughts about him as a footballer, and what do you think about his start in Premier League? Yeah, I think his start was was a bit hard, I think, uh, but then it became much better. And uh, and when we played against him, I think he was really good. So uh, he's a good player, and uh, he's young, like me. I'm not the youngest anymore, but I'm still young. So he has to keep on developing. And uh, yeah, as a striker for Manchester United, I guess you have to score goals as well. So that's his job. Just to follow <clears throat> follow up on that, uh, I'm Jonas from from Danish media as well. Have you been in in contact with with uh, Rasmus uh, yeah. while being here in in Manchester? Okay, um, you're playing uh, FC Copenhagen tomorrow uh, as a Norwegian. What is your relationship to to FC Copenhagen, and and how do you remember this club? I know you you trained in the club as well. Yeah, I was on a trial or whatever you want to call it in 2016. Uh, I think a couple of guys from from the club wanted me then, but not everyone, so it didn't happen. Uh, sad for them, but uh, maybe good for me because I went to Molde and uh, it was a good choice. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I like the club, to be fair. Uh, it's a nice club. I've got a couple of friends that lives in Copenhagen as well, and uh, they are standing on the, I don't know what you call it, behind the goal uh, in a lot of games. So. So they, they enjoy it and uh, I like the club.
were you interested in joining FC Copenhagen, or, or and how was the week in Copenhagen for you, uh, the trial period? One more time, please. <laughs> were you interested when you were at trial at Copenhagen about joining them, or did you already know then it would just be? A I, I, I thought you asked now, uh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was interested. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> uh, obviously it was. Uh, to join the under 19s then uh, so yeah I was interested uh, of course that's why I went there uh, I remember even speaking with uh, Storley who was the, the coach uh, then I even got a shirt actually number 9 uh, Haaland uh, I think I still have a home actually so uh, so yeah I was interesting by, interested but it never happened uh, and uh, yeah my destiny was uh, another way and it was a uh, Decent way so far, so, so yeah. Did you have a negotiation with Copenhagen? I don't know. I was 16, so I I didn't do anything of that. David Copenhagen Sundays uh, in Copenhagen. We weren't exactly thrilled to draw uh, City again, uh, but what do you think about meeting uh, Copenhagen now? Yeah, it's a nice challenge. Um, they've done really good this this uh, this year. Uh, look what they or this season. I mean. Look what they did in the group stage. Uh, they did had some amazing games. Uh, women analyzing the the games and uh, they made it really difficult for for the for the teams they faced. So uh, I liked I liked the challenge. I like uh, I like Champions League and I like um, to meet different teams and to to go to different countries. It's nice. So it's nice. Yeah. Hi, Erling. Uh, also, a question for Denmark. Um, a question from Denmark. Um, which player from Copenhagen has made an impression on you? You have met them a couple of times during the, the last seasons. Is there a specific player? Uh, I like the I like the keeper. I think he's, he's really, I don't remember his name, uh, but I really like him. He's good with the feet and uh, and uh, yeah, so I like him uh, especially. I mean, there's a lot of good players. Look at the games they did against Bayern and uh, and uh, Manchester United. It was amazing. Uh, the wing is also nice. I don't know his name, sorry. <laughs> of course, I have to say my Norwegian brothers as well, Elionissi and Meli. Uh, but uh, the left winger, I think. I don't Achuri. know his name. Huh? At Elias Achuri. I think so, yeah. Tunisian guy. Yeah, him. I like him as well. So these two. Is there a difference um, going up against uh, defenders from Copenhagen compared to defenders from from the Premier League? No, I think both focus a lot on me, so uh, it's a bit the same. Uh, so, uh, so it's not big difference. Uh, they are good. They are strong. Also good with the ball um, as well. Copenhagen, uh, I like how they play, but uh, they're both strong. So yeah.